He took out his glasses and put them on. They were blurry with water. Guess what? Said Annie. What? Said Jack. I saw the shark when we are, when we are swimming. Annie said, but I didn't tell you. I wanted to stay calm. Jack stared at her. I saw it too. I just swam swam faster so you could swim faster. And I swam faster so you could swim faster, said Annie. I guess we swam double fast then, Jack said. He shook his head with no wonder. What well, now, said Annie. We go home, said Jack. But we haven't solved Morgan's li- riddle yet, said Annie. Jack sighed. He pulled up. He pulled his notebook out of his pack. It was soaked. He pulled out the ocean book. It was soaked too. We failed, he said. My research, research is all wet. We'll never be master librarians now. Jack put everything away. Let's go, he said sadly. He stood up. Then he started across the pink reef toward the treehouse. Annie f- followed him. Ouch! And he said, "What's wrong?" Jack lowered back. "I stepped on something," said Ben. And he bent to, bent down to rub her foot. "What?" said Jack. "A shell?" "Yeah, this." And he picked, and he picked up a large gray shell. "Boy, it is rough, rough as gray as a rock, as and plain as plain can be," whispered Jack. They found the answer. The shell looked like a clam shell, only bigger and with more ridge. How could this ugly shell be the answer to the riddle? Said Annie. What about the part that says, "There is great beauty in me"? Great research, said Jack. He opened the soaked ocean book. The pages were stuck together, but he was able to turn a few. He found a picture of a gray shell. He read, "Divers search for oysters in deep water, but sometimes oysters wash up, wash up on reefs or beaches. Inside some oysters, you can find a pearl. The pearl's natural beauty makes it a treasure. It must have a pearl inside it," said Jack. Annie peered into the crack between the two halves of the shell. It can't. I can't see anything," she said. "How does a pearl get in there, anyway?" Jack had. Jack read aloud from the wet page. Sometimes a grain, a grain of sand will get between the oyster shell and its skin. This attracts the oyster, oyster, so it makes a pearly material. To surround the grain of sand, in this way, over a few years, a pearl is formed. I can't tell if there's a pearl in there or not," said Annie. "Maybe we could bang, bang it against a rock." Now that was really irritating the oyster," said Annie. "Yeah. Maybe we should." Just leave it alone," said Annie. She gently put the oyster back in the water. "What? But how will we have? But how will we know if the oyster oyster is the right answer to the is the right answer to the riddle?" said Jack. Morgan said, "We'll know," said Annie. "Come on." Jack pushed his glasses into place. Then he had, he and Annie picked up their shoes and socks. They climbed. Th- Climbed through the window of the treehouse. Morgan's scroll was lying on the floor. It was open. Look," said Annie. She and Jack stared at the scroll. The riddle had faded away. In its place, in its place was one shimmering silver, silver word, oyster. Morgan's magic," whispered Annie. Jack let out a huge sigh. We got it right," he said. And and here is the Pennsylvania book," said Annie. "Let's go home." She opened the book. She pointed to a picture to picture of the Frog Creek Woods. "I wish we could go there," she said. The wind started to blow. The trees started to spin. 
The wind blew harder and harder. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Ten. Chapter Ten. The True Pearl. Dawn light. Dawn light slanted into the tree house. No, no time. No time at all had passed since they've left. Day was breaking. Jack rolled up the ancient scroll. He tucked up into the corner. We solved the first riddle, he said. Three more to go. I don't see any other scroll, said Annie. Maybe tomorrow we get the next riddle, said. That's okay, said Jack. I think I need to rest and dry out. His t-shirts and shorts were still soaked. His backpack too. Only his shoes and socks were dry. And this needs to dry out too," said Annie. She put the red ocean. She put the red ocean book in a patch of sunlight. Then Jack and Annie climbed down the ladder. They walked through the woods, through the leafy shadows and golden light. They left the woods and started down there. And started down the street. Stared down the street. You know, we should have found the answer to the riddle right away," said Jack. "The oyster was on the reef, on the reef all along. I know, but we wouldn't have so much fun," said Annie. "Fun," said Jack. "You call being squeezed by an octopus and chased by a shark fun?" Don't forget the dolphins," said Annie. "said simply." Jack smiled. "Right," he said. "The dolphins made up for everything. They were fun. I guess they were the true pearl and the oyster," said Annie. "Yep," said Jack. "I wonder what Sam is doing right now." Sam? Annie grinned at him. "You're nuts," said she. "said they climbed their steps and went into the house, into their house." We're back! Annie shouted. Did you get your shoes wet? Their mom called. Not one bit, said Jack. Then he, he and Annie slipped up the stairs to change, to change their clothes.